ideally it's one solid piece and it just comes out and it slides down, but it's okay to have it in any denomination. Cause sometimes just like whether it's how you're positioned on the toilet, it could be a little different. Um, and that can also be throughout the day. So they don't have to do it necessarily all in the morning. It could be like three, four inches or two, six inches or one 12 inch or however they want to the dump denomination, as long as they get that amount. And the average length of this is about close to 12 inches. But for women, it's a little bit less. It's closer to about an eight to 10 inches. This is the Anthropology Podcast, the podcast where we optimize the bodies, brains, and lifestyles of entrepreneurs, go-getters, and world-changing innovators. Welcome to the Anthropology Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Walker. As a naturopathic doctor and anthropologist, I optimize the health and performance of badass women working to change the world as entrepreneurs and go getters. You know, people exactly like you. Your business, body, balance, and inner badass, these are the themes we are exploring. Before we jump into the interview, I want to invite you to join our free Facebook community, Legacy. If you want to be something amazing, you need to surround yourself with amazing people. The legacy community is made up of badass women living, not leaving, but living our legacy every single day. We are leaders, parents, entrepreneurs, and innovators collectively committed to leaving the world better than we found it. My mission is to support the health and optimization of these badass superheroes, literally to places we never thought imaginable. If you are on a mission and get it that your health is the key to your unlimited potential, then join us. We are super awesome. You can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash BE legacy. See you there. So my guest today is someone who I've known for a long time. In fact, I have respected her for a long time. She is the epitome of a go-getter. She has been an entrepreneur since she was a young girl in her dance class. And she goes into that story on this podcast, but she is also a colleague. She is also a naturopathic doctor, and she is immensely passionate around one of the most foundational things we look at as NDs and probably the least favorite thing you talk talk about as health seekers or as patients, and that is poo. Now, if we're going to talk about bowel movements, we're going to bring someone in who can do it in not only an eloquent and passionate way, if you could even imagine that, but someone who literally describes poo and bowel movements as her life mission. Dr. Marisol Tergio is a naturopathic doctor. She is also known as the Queen of Thrones. And today she is going to take us through what it means to actually have a perfect poo. Now, if that isn't enticing enough, we're also going to talk about her product line, how she has integrated health and entrepreneurship, and how she taps into the feelings that she wants to be able to impart to the people in her life on a daily basis. She is a highly successful individual, entrepreneur, and naturopathic doctor. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Marisol, the Queen of Thrones. Dr. Marisol Tejero, welcome to the Anthropology Podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, Very excited. Such a pleasure. And um, I've wanted to have you on the podcast for a while for so many reasons, but you encapsulate this idea of entrepreneurship and health and wellness in such a really great capsule that uh, I thought there's so many different places that we can go uh, with this interview. But I want to start off, I want to lay a foundation so that people know what your background is and where you're coming from. We call you Dr. Marisol. We call you the Queen of Thrones. Give us a background on how you earned these two prestigious titles. Sure. So Dr. Marisol, obviously I was blessed to go back to school uh, in my later years. I actually went back as a mature student to naturopathic college and uh, mainly because I was, I was working, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I was always great at sales. Um, I loved communicating with people. I didn't want to be a, a regular medical doctor because I had had a really bad history as a child being misdiagnosed and I, I managed horribly. And my, although my mother was like, go be a doctor, go be a doctor. I was like, forget about it, you know, and I went down the road of going to be uh, uh, marketing and business and languages, and I took everything but the sciences. Um, and the the funny thing was, was that when I was a young child, and usually 
in your youth, you know, when you're, you know, two, three, four, five, the things I, I aspire to be was actually a doctor. I actually had two dreams. I wanted to be a doctor and I wanted to be Liza Minnelli. So my mom was always <laughs> trying to take me away from being Liza Minnelli because she's like, well, that's, that's a tough one to, to do and like, go be the doctor. Right. Um, so I, you know, was working as a sales representative doing really get great. I got an awesome, uh, gig working for a natural pharmaceutical company named heal, which was just my introduction really to the other side of medicine and naturopathic medicine. And I fell in love with the medicine. I got great training in Germany. Um, I was their best sales person for years. And I just got to a point where I had learned everything that the company had to offer, which was an enormous volume of information about cleansing medicine um, and homotoxicology, the study of toxins within the human system. And I just, I, I was like, I need more. Like I have a craving. This is like my passion. This is what I, I need to be doing. And I've always been one to want to live within a passionate place. Um, because if I don't, I, I easily lose my creativity. I don't function well. I go down a depressive spiral and I know that I need to be in my passion. So whenever I, I feel that, that, that intuitive, like clinch in my stomach, which I, I, I feel is one of the reasons why I've been, been a successful entrepreneur and will continue to be, um, is, is that I go with that gut instinct. So I said, you know what, I have to go be the doctor. And actually one of my clients said that to me, he goes, you, like Dr. Alan, in price. He's like, you, you, you know, more than the most of the naturopaths at this point, you need to go become the doctor. And so I went down that pathway and, you know, I didn't, I didn't regret it or look back. And even though I was older and, you know, I was in school with, you know, younger, younger, younger guys and they were, you know, great, but you know, they didn't have the same passion and reason sometimes for being there. Many did, but, but not all, you know, some people just went because they, you know, couldn't get into medical medical school or they just were doing the thing that they that they thought would be the next best thing but I was going with a true purpose right to become a naturopath and I had my business plan done before I even started school like I I was clear on my goals and on my missions um the queen of thrones came completely haphazard because my life I was always searching to really how to describe myself as a naturopathic doctor and you know identify myself as a, a, a very specific in a specific niche and I was floating around with cleansing and, you know, purification practitioner and priestess and it, nothing fit really well. And finally, one of my patients one day was talking to me and we were, you know, in my, my IV room and, you know, they had just come out of doing their colon hydrotherapy and we were having, you know, the all too common and Samus health practice conversation about your poo. <laughs> and uh, she just goes to me, you know, she's like, you are like the queen of the throne. And I'm like, oh, my God. I love that. Like that, that, that really does identify me. And, and little did she know, you know, I started telling her, I'm like, I was also like a pageant queen. I was like Miss Sudbury and Miss Ontario. So I love that. That to me actually fits perfectly. So I, and I said, you know, I'm one for when the sign comes, I'm going with it. So I, I went with that Queen of Thrones. And, you know, it ultimately, the way that I had built a lot of my practice was through um, promoting castor oil packs, but also through speech I would do about the perfect poo. And that perfect poo speech, speech would bring patients to me every time I would it yeah they would they would come they would come see me because they were so intrigued by you know how I had deciphered the code on on poo <laughs> so that's how my practice got really busy really quickly it was great well and people want to know about themselves right and and the thing about poo is it happens every day and if it's not happening every day this early in the podcast it should be a flag for you but um, what was it that you because you had this experience excuse me <clears throat> you had this experience where you um, you, you gave this talk and people loved it, but not everyone is like, I'm going to build my whole career around shit. Like, what is it that you're like, ah, like, I love this. This is so critical and so important because I will say like, you love it. You craft and channel poetry about bowel movements. Like this is, this is truly, truly a gift, Marisol. Like, look at your face. You're just like, you guys can't see it right now, but I'm looking at it. She's just like lighting. She's lighting up. This is the kind of person you want dealing with your digestion. 
Totally. And the thing to me, like, I think my mother was amazingly open about like shitting literally our entire life. And her thing, like we just, I, we, I grew up in a household of like IBS, like serious IBS. Like my dad was the anxious version where he would, you know, have diarrhea and then, you know, he'd always have that problem. And my mother was, you know, constantly constipated and we would go on, on trips and she'd be, you know, in, in her little Spanish uh, accent. I think que correr, which means in English, I have to run. And that's a saying of, I have to go to the bathroom. So we always have to go buy prunes and, you know, like the, the fiber that she wanted to go to the bathroom. So, and my mother would always be looking at our stools and, and she'd be make, make us go look at our stool. So we grew up with that. So it was, it was so Probably common normal. and so normal. And I, I was always... Yeah, it was so, so normal, right? And then I would talk to other people, and they're like, what are you doing, like, talking about your poo? And, I, you know, I was always uh, different from other people in so many different ways. So I just figured, out oh, that's just part of my, you know, heritage. Spanish people talk about poo more than other people. <laughs> they're more connected. And I just... You know, I've always, I was thinking about this this morning. It's funny because I've always been a, a firm believer of just trying something out there and seeing if it fits and then practicing it and seeing how well it fits. And I think my poo speech just started, I just started saying it to people. Like it just came out of the blue at like one day and I started saying it to people when I was a rep for heel. And then I just kept on saying it and I kept on getting better at saying it and I kept on refining it. And then I'm like, like now I have to the point where it's like, you know, in a one and a half minute, you know, poetry, um, acting, uh, little skit, I can describe the, the perfect poo. Right. So I've always been a firm believer of that, that, you know, you're practicing to get to your success and you don't know until you try it and you feel it in your body, if it's going to work for you. And that's what, that's what poo ended up becoming for me was just that, 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 that special little magic that I described really, really well. And it's, it, it truly like, cause ultimately as a naturopathic doctor, and I find this is what happens in our profession is that everyone has a problem finding their niche. Like the biggest, and I'm sure you hear this all the time with your clients is that they, they tell you like, well, I do everything. And I'm like, yeah, but everything means nothing to everybody. <laughs> Right. So you do absolutely nothing if you can't describe yourself in a really good tight niche. But so for me, it's like, you know, those quizzes on Facebook, like how many times have you signed up for a quiz because you want to know about you? So I found something that's, you know, unique to absolutely every one of us. Right. We each do it differently, but we all do it. So it's a common ground, but it's very, very niche specific. So, you know, I encourage like people, naturopaths and, and practitioners of all types, you know, to really like try to zone into what you like to talk about, first of all, because you have to be in that area of passion. Uh, number two, to really, uh, you know, find like know what your pain is, like your pain points along your life. Like when I was a kid, I was constipated as an adult, like through all through Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, I was, you know, running to the bathroom and past that con consistently it was like IBS anxiety like uh, severe but I that was my pain point and it would is it's what led me to my purpose and to my passion right so I I owned it right because I I had no other option but to get better I had to fix myself um and I had to figure it out and so that has given me awesome tools awesome ways of explaining an awesome understanding of who my avatar is out there as well because I know it's me it's me in all those phases of my life it's my mom. It's my dad. Right. It's our family. It's like it's all those those, those perfect avatars. And I can speak from all of those voices because I've been there and I I felt what it felt like to be at the bottom. And I know what it feels like to feel great. Right. So that that that's that's why shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love how you mentioned purpose in there so many times. And, and I always make a distinction with both my patients and my business coaching clients that there's a difference between passion and purpose and purpose is deep -er, and it's a bigger fuel tank and it's, and it's raw, but it will get you out of bed and it will get you doing things that you never, you never thought you would do. And it's interesting because I think that in both business and in health, people who are aligned to purpose get better outcomes hands down, it is like the secret weapon. And you, I, I heard you speak at the Archangel Summit uh, last, uh, last week, and you mentioned that there as well. And I was like, she's tapped in. Like, we see this. We see people who are successful when they're tapped into their, to their purpose. So I wanted to throw that out there because I think it is so critical and so important. And I want to circle back to, because um, you talked about the perfect poo. And well, I think perfectionism and poo have a, have a relationship. In this case, I want to talk not about perfectionism, but like, I know people are sitting there driving in their car, horrified by the, by the, the subject matter and the breakfast that they're consuming at the same time. However, I think they're also thinking, okay, so tell me like, what is, what is the perfect poo, Dr. Marisol? 
first of all, you have to, you know, do all the steps to position for success, right? So you get the urge, you go, you go down to the toilet, you position for success. Ideally, you have like a little, you know, squatty potty or a little, I have stools um, in my bathroom. And then what happens is just, um, it's a magical event. It's it typically the, the, the poo that we're looking for and is I one quote. that- it's a magical yeah. event. I'm sorry. Like, we, let's just let's just take a moment. Okay, as you were. <laughs> but it is right. It's it's you know it's our it's our most important production from our, our body. Like it truly is. You know, it's like uh, it's like our assembly line is the gut. You know, it's like Nike. Like that's our shit. Is Nike's like that's, you know our, <laughs> our important product. It's our. I, I like to say it's our GDP, our gross domestic product. <laughs> There's so many ways I can go with this, but you know, you, so you position, you, you get ready for success and literally it's like in, in zero, zero to 60 and 3.5, you're done. You've reached the finish line, right? So you have that quick stool and you're like, and then you, you stand up, you know, and you look down and you're like, Oh my God, that came out of my body pretty much. Cause that's how it should feel. Right. And then, you know, you, you wipe and you should be wiping clean. There should be nothing sticking to your paper. If it sticks to your paper, that's a sign of mucus inflammation, you know, uh, dysbiosis, a lot, of, a lot of issues within the gut and, and excess mucus happening. And you know, the length of it, it's actually specific to each and every person. It's from your wrist to your elbow. And that basically is the size of your lower descending colon, um, and the, the amount of food fiber and fluids that you ate before. The other thing that people don't don't know about, like there's actually 11 golden nuggets about a good stool. It should it should sink down into the toilet. It should never float. If it floats, that you we have either fat malabsorption or or lack of problems with fiber, right? To absorb absorb the fat. Um, it should never stain the toilet bowl, right? If it stains, again, mucus issues. There should be no smell. It should go clean. Excessive smell, especially like rotten egg smell, is a sign of zinc deficiency. Like, and this is all in the research. Like, I didn't like pull this out of my butt <laughs> right it's actually this is a, this is in the the research so like those are all the key the key things that we really want to be looking for within our stools and you know and you we should walk out of the bathroom lighter no having not strained literally it just came out it sank it's solid it's in ideally one piece and you're done for the day right ideally so but that that you know and that's the problem is that this is not the common occurrence and so this is why this makes us a really good uh uh, point of intrigue and an entry point for a lot of people um, because you know pe- the the client who comes to a naturopathic doctor it's very specific right the, m- what I've noticed just having worked in health food stores and worked in the clinical practices that you know health food stores are like a gateway like an entry place where an entry point where people come into the industry they learn about things or on the internet as well too you know they, they'll dabble they'll try different supplements they'll you know experience but, but the problem is lots of times they're not getting better they're just spending money when people are then invested for a period of time there they then evolve into moving into a clinical practice and then investing more money going to see a naturopathic doctor so you really as a naturopathic doctor or even any type Type of like alternative healthcare provider, you have to be giving them a level of something different that they wouldn't get anywhere else. And that's where you've got to like specialize. And for me, that, that, that gut, that poop aspect is a perfect area of specialization. But yeah, I am always ch- my, and if you grabbed, I, I program the, the perfect poo into my patients. <laughs> <laughs> like psychologically, like through our conversations and like they, they'll walk into a, a, a follow-up visit and they, 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 they speak out the rhyme. They're like, I, I positioned, I landed, it sunk, no smell, no hyper wipe. It was the size. They just tell me because I've trained them so well that they are, they're independent now. So they know what are their measures of health. And I think that was also a big point that separated me in clinical practice was that I, the, I'm very good at training people to to know what to do so that they can be autonomous so I can be that naturopathic doctor for them but only be their touch point when they don't know what to do we just launched a new website and we put right on it let's not work together because that's the goal the goal is that we don't have you don't have to be dependent on us Um, I love that you have like an adult potty training course is essentially what you are offering people it's amazing which is top of mind for me because I have a two and a half year old Two things that I want you to clarify for people. When you say the length of stool, does that count if it's all broken up or does it have to be all in one piece? I'm asking the questions that nobody wants to ask. 
I love it. Yes. And actually, this is the question I, I get a lot to um, only by the inquisitive minds, right? Um, it should definitely, ideally, it's one solid piece and it just comes out and it slides down, but it's okay to have it in any denomination because sometimes just like whether it's how you're positioned on the toilet, it could be a little different. Um, and that can also be throughout the day. So they don't have to do it necessarily all in the morning. It could be like three, four inches or two, six inches or one 12 inch or however they want to the denomination as long as they get that amount and the average length of this is about close to 12 inches but for women it's a little bit less it's closer to about an 8 to 10 inches so it's uh any denomination as long as it comes out of the body and how many times a day are you aiming for people to have a bowel movement what's what is the ideal and i love how my perfectionists in my practice they they try to find out what this number is and that they get so fixated on it which only moves them further away from this number ironically but you know in an ideal world if you were going with the flow how many times a day are people having a bowel movement so it, the best way to do that is to look at nature, right? And like, I mean, in this whole study of poo, <laughs> which pooology, I guess I should call it, <laughs> I, uh, I, I would look at my little dog a lot to see her and see what she would do. And, you know, dogs will eat and then go to the bathroom, eat and go to the bathroom. So that would be the ideal command that the body has. But for many of us, it doesn't, we don't have that in this day and age for a simple reason is that our levels of stress are just too high. And with these levels of stress, you really need to have a relaxed gut in order to have a good bowel movement because of the parasympathetic shift. And so that's one of the reasons why most people will go once a day and ideally in the morning because they've slept all night and they've had that parasympathetic shift hopefully. And if they've had that shift, then they'll go to the bathroom in the morning. So I'm really like perfection has never been my thing. It's more like progress. So as long as you are going daily and you're working towards that amount and I, you know, ideally three times after you eat, but you know, and now these days too, like it's hard to say that because many of us are fasting and having two meals a day and right. So it just depends on your, on your lifestyle. Um, so aim for the one once a day and it being a good quantity. And what is, I know what this is. I'm, I'm just asking, I'm asking for my people. What is a squatty potty? So the squatty potty is basically um, an awesome uh, tool. That's a, basically a stool. You could do this as a stool or I, I, really anything. Um, high heel shoes work as well. <laughs> you can take like <laughs> platform shoes and put them by your back. Cause they, they basically put your, put your body in the perfect squatting position, which is how our bodies go to the bathroom best, right? So we, it just opens up the lower sphincter and everything can just slide out. So, you know, I, I remember being at, at the International Colon Hydrotherapy Association conference and I was speaking on a, a study we had done in our clinic and, uh, you know, I was wearing these like five inch heels and I, I'm like, oh no, I have to go to the bathroom before the conference. And I was like, these high heels work perfectly. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so you can throw your high heels in your bathroom if you can't get a squat, squatty potty. <laughs> it's a little classier than the travel version of the squatty potty, right? It's a little bit more, um, yeah, I've had patients too where I'm like, just like you can flip over, especially with kids, you can flip over like a garbage pail that's sitting in the in the bathroom or lie it on its side. Like you can be really, really creative, but it makes a huge, huge difference. And so for those people who are struggling with, uh, with their bowel movements, either dealing with constipation or looser bowel movements or IBS where they're swinging back and forth. What do you take people through in terms of this, this training piece? How do we actually start to restore the gut? What do we need to be aware of? Um, so in, are you trying to talk in terms of supplements or just in terms of like everything in, as we do in natural? Yeah. Medicine? I mean, we don't, have to, <laughs> we don't have to get into specific supplements because my fear is that um, people are going to run out and they're going to take all of the supplements you possibly mentioned, hoping that it's going to move them towards a better bowel movement. Because let's be honest, like everyone is happier in life if they're having good bowel movements. And so out, if, out of sheer desperation, I don't want anyone running and deciding to just consume everything all at once. But let's speak generally of the types of things that can be uh, that can be helpful and then people can can get specific uh, specific care from there. But what is your approach? And let's start with constipation because it's going to be different whether we're talking about looser bowel movements or constipation. So my my thing that this has been my gripe, I think, in medicine for quite a long time, just uh, just from a personal um, experience and realizing that the 
the the gut is controlled by the mind and controlled by you know mood anxiety stress depression and our ability you know when we look back to anatomy to 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 move between the parasympathetic state and the sympathetic state right the stress and, and the rest state and in my german training they would discuss this a lot because cleansing and detoxification doesn't function in a stress sympathetic state everything shut down circulation is going to the extremities it's going to the brain it's going you know to like to make sure that you're able to run away from the predator um right so your circulation isn't concentrated in the internal organs so digestion shuts down detoxification shuts down cleansing shuts down bowel movements shut down so i think number one is that people really have to start working at at, at reviving their p- parasympathetic state there and i call it like making your parasympathetic practice happen right to poo because otherwise you can you can take every single supplement under the world un, under the sky and uh you know be eating the fiber be doing the, the the fluids the fats you know which are the basic you know dietary things that we should be doing but if you haven't figured out how to get your parasympathetic state flowing things aren't going to happen so that's that's where my passion fell into par- castor oil packs and how i use those in order to help the body reset itself because it is a strong tool to improve parasympathetic state but there's other things that also improve parasympathetic state like meditation uh yoga practice exercise right there's so many so many different things even and i'm gonna supplement push here um gaba right like gaba now is being researched more as a, a digestive aid than anything because it seems to be even any gaba that we're taking supplementally is being used for gut health so our our, our probiotic in our clinic we've actually compounded it with gaba to help the gut relax right so that's where the the new research is going so it's very interesting like that that and and the funny thing is that people when they do say a cleanse no one ever talks about improving their parasympathetic state and that's when people get dreaded cleansing symptoms like our clinic we do cleanses constantly that's all we do with our patients we cleanse the gut we have people on you know month-long programs you know two to three times a year you know they know how to cycle them in they just book them and come in they do follow-up pre and post testing but you know like they know about the parasympathetic state they know they have to be doing their castor oil packs if they don't do that their body just won't work and 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 our uh, adverse reaction rate is like nil like our patients don't have bad responses at all to cleansing we don't get acne bursts the only thing is that they're hungry right because they're eating a really clean diet but no adverse reactions on cleansing and most times when people do do cleansing they get acne and headaches and they feel blah like not not with us because our whole focus is parasympathetic stage first and then move from there into like making sure you're digesting your food properly right like you're you have all the right factors in your gut like this good stomach acid um a good digestive enzymes and then do are you absorbing well right and what are you doing to help your gut absorb properly right alkalinizers work really well to help absorption not only of your you know gut microbes sticking better to your gut but also of improving and reducing inflammation and in the mucosal lining and then are you eliminating properly right so what can you do to make the bowels move better castor oil packs exercise right like just even moving like child's pose and yoga like there's so many easy hacks that we could be doing just to begin our, our gut well and then back to the mind staying consistent and staying committed to you know realizing that this is an important part of your life and if you're like you said i'm, I'm a i'm a joy <laughs> that's what i do i'm a joy teacher <laughs> i teach people how to poo and then you're because of it, right? <laughs> it's amazing how often I, when I have people who have, <clears throat> excuse me, depression, we start talking about digestion and they're like, oh, I'm so constipated. And we clear the constipation, we clear the depression. Like it really is important to people to have great bowel movements. And I love the castor oil pack as a tool that you talk about. And I know this is something that you are immensely passionate about. And if you haven't noticed, Marisol gets passionate about things. And this is, this is right up there in one of them. And I think for a lot of people, the concept of a castor oil pack or even hearing, but a lot of people are hearing about this for the first time. So what is, what is castor oil? Cause I heard about this the first time as a kid, because my mother was obsessed with Edgar Casey, and she, she's like castor oil, castor oil. Like it was, so it was, it was something that, that I was always aware of, but like take us through the science and the history of how castor oil has been used as a, um, as a healing intervention. That's so awesome. Okay. So this is my, so I now, if you remember in school, right? Like we, we barely got anything about castor oil, right? It was like a two second, like like, rush over and hydrotherapy class. 
Right. Yeah. And then in the um, third year with all the protocols for all the different conditions, they would quickly mention at the end of the protocol and no one would say what it did. That, I remember that so clearly. Right. Because for me, how I got connected to castor oil was that I was um, seeing uh, going to health food stores, going to the clinics. And I would always, you know, castor oil somehow would always like shine at me at the, at the lower level of the shelves. because It's always where the dust is, the castor oil. Right. But it's, it's a staple in every single uh, health store. Right. It's it's crazy. It's like one the little blue oceans in the health food industry, right? It was the castor oil. It's like super dusty uh, bottle on the bottom of the shelf. Yeah, dusty, right? But it's there. It's always there no matter what, whether it's sold or not. They just always, they, they made sure that they had it. And then, you know, uh, people, I would talk to people about my IBS because I'm obviously very open of a person. And, you know, the health food store, people would always recommend, oh, you should do castor oil packs. And I'd be like, and then they would tell me about the castor oil pack. And, th- and this was the thing was that, you know, back in the day, like, the, the actual true history of castor oil is this. Castor oil is, and where I was going was that now we teach a seven hour course at the college about just castor oil. Like it's pretty intense. Like you'd be, you, you're, it's shocking to see the research and what this oil does. So it's a, the most unique vegetable oil that exists. Um, it is the only vegetable oil that has uh, alcohol groups on this on the 12th carbon. And it has a special triglyceride chain, if you remember your biochem, um, that called ricinoleic acid. The bean, this comes from the castor oil plant. The bean is actually toxic um, and it contains ricin, which can kill you within six hours. It inhibits your DNA synthesis. Um, and you'll see that on like CSI. They'll joke about like, you know, biological warfare. They're using ricin and that's from the cast- castor bean, the meal, the protein. But the oil is the absolute opposite where the oil is like uber healing. Like they, the research now with the oil, they found, they know that it's an anti-inflammatory. It reduces edema. Um, there's studies and trials now that it increases glutathione in cells, uh, lenses of the eye. Um, they found that it breaks down biofilm in, in the, the, the oral mucosa. Um, it, and it, of course, works on relaxing the nervous system. So just like five key points on just on castor oil. That's incredible. But the structure, this chemical structure of castor oil, what it allows it to do as compared to all other oils is that it makes it um, uh, a lower molecular weight. So 298 Daltons, where most other oils are over 500. And it has to be under 500 in order to be able to go through the epidermis and get into the dermis. So this is what makes castor oil so healing. And when you do something like a castor oil pack, which I'll explain in a moment, that the oil actually does go into the body, into the circulation and into the lymphatic system. And it's also used often as a carrier oil for, say, essential oils, right? Because you, you have that permeation of the epidermis. Nothing goes through the stratus corneum, that lower level of the epidermis, without it being of the right molecular. Weight. So even if you're, you know, doing uh, like a coconut oil, like as a skin cream, you're really just topically moisturizing and you're not getting deeper. So what I re- always recommend to patients is to mix everything with castor oil, because if you mix it with castor oil, you'll just get better penetration, you'll get better results of all your, all your creams and potions and lotions, right? So the, and the tradition of the use of castor oil is unbelievable. Indians used it for abdominal problems. Traditional Chinese medicine used it for joint pain, poultices and packs. So it actually extends... We often think it's just Edgar Casey, but it extends back to the origins of time. Um, Egyptians would use it to embalm themselves because for them, the important part was moving on to the next life, right? Um, and then, of course, Edgar Casey in the early 1900s, he popularized castor oil and he made the, the famous castor oil pack. Um, and But the problem was with the castor oil pack was it was a disaster to do. It was like 20 steps, right? Like I'm sure you've recommended it for yeah. clients and patients. Like no one has done it, right? Like how many times do you say like do it and no one does? They all say they do it. Yeah, yeah, you're amazed when they actually do do it, right? You're like, oh my god, you did it because <laughs> I know I was told so many times and I I wouldn't do it. So what finally got me to to do it was that I was like you know, I'm a person who I got to make things better. I'm not, I'm not going to ever do things status quo ever in anything in my life. So when I got really sick in third year of naturopathic school, I was like, you know, doing the supplements, I was exercising, good mindset. I had everything eating good diet, but what I was missing was the improving my parasympathetic tone. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to bring in this faster oil pack because I think this is going to be what'll help me get kind of through the hump. And I sewed a pack up to actually like make it easy. Right. And so what I ended up creating was my first castor oil pack back in 2010 called the Oja. And then, you know, years later I revamped it, redesigned it, recreated it. And I made it way more, much better, much better version of it. And, uh, impermeable, a two-step process because the original castor oil pack was like about a 20 step process. 
the OJA, my first try at it was about a 10 stage process. And then that was still too complicated. And then my now Queen of Thrones casserole pack is like a two stage process. So it's just simple. And how you put it on is you put oil on the pack and you put it on, on your liver area is the most classically placed area for the castor oil pack. You can use it anywhere on your body, but that is the classic pack is over your liver under your, your right rib cage and just wear it at least for an hour to overnight and, and get all the benefits of it. Amazing. And we're, we're going to start carrying your castor oil in the, in the clinic because we are in the, we're in the downtown core. Like it is just a sympathetic overload. You walk outside and you're just hit by everyone's sympathetic fight or flight, uh, energy. And, uh, I think it's going to be a, a secret weapon for our clients. And I, I agree. I've loved watching your evolution because we had your original Oja, um, castor oil in our, in our first clinic. And, um, it was great, but I can see how it's so much more simple now. And it, you know, it's interesting. You describe this like history of castor oil when, um, when I was working in South Africa and we were practicing in these remote communities, they would have these little like corner stores and the corner stores literally had heads of cabbage and maybe a band aid box from like 30 years ago. And this wall of castor oil, it was like somebody thought, well, you know what, we don't know what to do with this stuff. So we're going to send it off to like remote stores in rural Africa. And maybe they can figure out what to, uh, what to do with it. And everyone knew not to drink it. Um, so it was really cool. We, we would run workshops on how to use castor oil from a healing perspective topically. And they were like, for the first time in 20 years, we are selling out of castor oil. Um, cause you use the tools that you have access to. So I've seen the power of it. I've seen people put it on cysts and those cysts will just like open up and drain. I've had people use castor oil packs with kidney stones that are stalled and they've like passed that kidney stone with an hour, like really incredible stuff that I don't recommend you do, uh, at home, but, um, it's a really powerful tool. Yeah. And you know, this is the thing. And this is how I define too a powerful tool as if it's legendary. Like I feel castor oil is legendary because you really can find it everywhere. Um, and now what's super interesting is the amount of research that's being done out there and like, um, the dental industry, periodontal medicine, like there's just a recent, uh, research I had just found about, um, them using castor oil, um, comparing it to, to milk or saline solution as a, a preserver of dental ligaments. If you lose a tooth, right. Because typically milk and saline solution and, you know, castor oil scored right quite well close to the, the milk and saline solution. So it's just, it's just phenomenal. Castor oil as a breakdown of biofilm, which is, you know, a big problem us snatch pass are constantly dealing with. Uh, it breaks it down better than any of the artificial like chlorhexidine solutions. So that's like the, that's phenomenal. And it, it functions better in vivo. I look at castor oil like this, like, you know, it's like this perfect plant, you know, it's called, you know, the palm of Christ. Um, biblically it was used, uh, Jesus Christ would use it to, to anoint whenever you hear anoint in the Bible to heal the sick. Um, the Kings and Queens would be anointed with castor oil. That's how they would take their own, their throne. Right. So it's kind of fitting that I'm the queen of thrones as well. <laughs> And priestesses, the same thing. They would, as they as they would go up into their clergy, uh, become popes. They would be anointed with castor oil. So this plant has the power to kill with the seed and the meal, and the power, ultimate power to heal with the oil. It's like the perfect yin and yang. Like I just, I'm just so inspired by this oil and I, I'm, I'm thankful that it's part of my mission to to promote it and to to not allow it to disappear in our practices because it truly is something that has stuck and it's amazing the vibe and the amount of people that know about castor oil packs even though as a profession because the education hasn't been uh, pushed um, until I got back to the college that it you know it's kind of was slipping off of the radar and people weren't recommending it as much even though you know you do, you do castor oil packs daily and everything that you're taking, all of your supplements, all those things work better. Your exercise works better. Your food works better. Everything works better. It's just a dynamizer of everything that you're doing. Right? I love so, it. Your secret weapon. Yeah. And it's relaxing. <laughs> Which we need more of. Queen of Thrones, how would you define health? I define health as not the absence of disease. I define it as the living within your passion. If you could, if you won the lottery, would you still be doing what you're doing? That's what I ask myself every day to decide whether I continue down any path that I'm choosing. And that's how I define health. Because when you're happy in life, you're healthy, right? And it's just hand in hand. So that's how I define it. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And I love that benchmark, right? Would you keep doing what you're going to be, what you're doing every day? Absolutely. And change well, course. Just... Yeah. You, you listen. <laughs> I, 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 we write our own stories. 
On October 26th and 27th, we're doing something really special in Toronto. For those of you who have been hanging out on the Anthropology podcast for a period of time, you know that we are driven by the mission that when people are well, they can change the world. On October 26th and 27th, I'm going to be hosting an event in Toronto called Impact Lives. This event has been designed for clinician entrepreneurs and wellness entrepreneurs in general who want to learn how to amplify their business. We are bringing in keynote speakers from across North America and implementation session leaders to help you not only become more inspired with respect to your business, but to learn new skills that you can start to implement right away. Whether you want to launch your own podcast, write your first book proposal, or create a system for patient acquisition or new clients that takes your business to the whole new level, we have got your back. Impact Lives is a two-day event taking place at the Globe and Mail Centre in downtown Toronto in a stunning venue that overlooks the city. It's going to bring together 150 passionate entrepreneurs looking to take the lives of their families, themselves, and the people that they work with to a whole new level. For those of you who have been loyal listeners, I would love to have you there. There is a coupon code that I am releasing just for listeners of the Anthropology Podcast. That is Anthropology20. And if you go to impactlivesevent.com, you can use that coupon code to receive 20% off the ticket price for the event happening in October. I cannot wait to see action takers, go-getters, and anthropologists like yourselves there when we gather together for Impact Lives. This is a this is where we're going to transition to the second phase of the interview. And in this in this phase, what I'm going to ask you are some KPIs or key performance indicators. So just like we have these in our businesses, I believe we have them in our health as well. So I've got six rapid fire questions for you if you're ready. I am always ready. I know. I know you are like with great enthusiasm. Okay, do you have a consistent evening routine and if so, can you share? Absolutely. So every single night, my staff makes me a lemon rohibos cleanse or rohibos tea. I come home after practice. I, before I walk into the house, I sit in my car and I decide how I am going to act with the people who I love in my life. So I, you know, become the loving wife that I want to be, the one that kisses my husband, adores him, and same thing with my children. So I walk into the house with that intention, and then I go and I meditate for 10 minutes, and then I do my evening routine, which includes a lot of castor oil. <laughs> surprise, and surprise. Then I go I actually do castor oil packs in the morning because it, I get to sit with it longer. So it just, uh, it works better for me in the morning. <laughs> fiction or nonfiction. What are you reading right now? I am God. What am I not reading? The, okay. No, I'll tell you exactly the Bible. I'm actually reading the Bible. So I've, I've been on a mission. Um, I'm a uh, Catholic, by, by birth, uh, but I believe in everything and I'm open to everything. And I've always been a firm believer that the uh, one of my patients in naturopathic school said, everything that you ever need to know about health, you will find it within the Bible. So I have an enormous library. Like I just had a flood and lost about 400 books. I've read, I'm so well read. It's, it's unbelievable in health and business atmosphere, but the Bible I've never read. So I started reading in Spanish last year and decided that was challenging. Spanish is my, la my first language, but I, I'm going to do it in English and so I can pull a little bit more inf information out. So I'm reading the Bible like chapter by chapter. And it's, it's, uh, it's actually a very seedy novel. <laughs> like, I'm pretty <laughs> amazed by it. Like some parts of it, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't, I thought it was going to be very pristine and clean, but you know, the Bible and any religious text is just about, you know, examples of humanity and how we are as human beings in many different ways. So it's just an interesting, it's, it's a great read. I, I, I bought myself a super leather bound, awesome Bible. And I'm just taking notes and just reading it. That's amazing. And I've never had that answer before. Of course, I, of course I get it from you. Um, I think I know your answer. So I'm going to put a caveat on this question. What is the one thing you're most consistent with, with respect to your health besides castor oil? God. So there's like three things, right? Cause I like my yoga practice, my meditation practice, my diet practice and my supplement practice. And my, there's more, there's five mindset. I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually, hold on. I'm good at scheduling it in. So I schedule my time every day 
to do my practices, which are varied, which are my meditation, which are my mindset training or reading something, uh, which are my supplements, which are my yoga and to preparing my food so that I have good nutrition all day long and tea and tea practice. So I, and I'm just good at scheduling in the hour that I need in the morning for my yoga and, and then another hour or so to do the rest of it. So I just schedule, it's actually in, if you look at my iCal, you'll see my, my morning routine is like my, you know, my me time. And then I have my dream time, my genius time, which is like when I write books and when I do things like that. So I'm just good at scheduling it. And that's what, that's what my health, that's what my health practice is. And that's what you do when you have purpose, you schedule things in. What is something totally badass about you that people would not otherwise know? Badass of me? Oh, I am a badass salsa dancer. <laughs> I can, <laughs> and I can teach anybody how to salsa dance as well, too. So I'm, I rock it. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to hold you to that. I think I'm going to present a challenge for you there. Yeah. What do you do for fun or play? Um, so me and my husband are very good at, at, uh, going out dancing actually is one of our biggest things. Um, he is a white boy <laughs> who has really good rhythm. Um, so we go out dancing for fun and we like to have parties with friends. Um, we love to live in passion and with friends and with love all around us. So we, that's what we do for fun and travel as well. So we just try to get out and live life. Yeah. Engage in it. Last question for you. Entrepreneurism. Are we born this way or do we learn to become entrepreneurs? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> I, I think it's both. I am born to be an entrepreneur. My first endeavor was in dance class. When I was like eight years old, I learned how to darn point shoes to make $10 a pair of point shoes. And I had like calluses on my fingers for this, but I loved it. I, I thought it was super fun. And then throughout my entire life, I had always been conceiving businesses. So I am a born entrepreneur, but I think also people can learn it. So I, th I don't think that it's either or. I think it's just that you have to decide how you want to live your life. Uh, the life of an entrepreneur is autonomous. You need to be self-directed. You need to not be, you, you need not to have to always rely on other people to drive you. You have to be your own best driven force, but that's learnable as well too, right? So for people who want that, they just have to decide the type of life they want. And then they have to put the, the things in their schedule and, and organize themselves in order to maintain their drive and maintain their motivation. And they have to figure out ways to maintain it. Like I'm, I, I'm a sucker for a good motivational conference, right? And I go frequently because I know that I'm performing at a very high level, managing like three businesses. Uh, and I have a husband who manages his three businesses. And I need to, I need to outperform and be motivated constantly. And so I need to do things to, to create that. So I think it's born and I think you can, you can train it. Yeah. You tap into that purpose and you can do what you need to do. Dr. Marisol, queen of thrones. Where can people find out more about what you are up to? So you can go to my website, www.drmarisol.com. Of course, um, there's lots of good downloadable, um, uh, freebies that you can enjoy about diet, about pooping, of course. Um, also, uh, uh, Instagram is a great place to follow me. We're becoming very active on Instagram and on Facebook at Dr. Marisol Queen of Thrones. So find us there. Those are probably the two best places. And um, I, I've given some links as well, too, if people want to download those uh, through you as well. So For sure. And we'll hook everyone up in, uh, in the show notes so that they can access all of those pieces. Such a pleasure to have you. I'm so glad we finally hooked up this conversation on Poo. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to, I, I know, uh, for, to all your listeners out there, like, don't give up. Like I, you know, I, I'm dealing with failure every single day. Like if failure is my best friend, honestly. And it's like, I am not an instant success. I'm just really good at practicing things. So I just want to encourage all of your listeners out there to just keep on practicing, fail, fail forward fast as the saying goes and just keep on going and don't give up and, and really, uh, zone in to find your your area of passion and keep on asking yourself that question. You know, if I won the lotto tomorrow, would I just keep on doing what I'm doing and then just blow it up bigger, which is what I would do? Or would I like go and take a cruise? Because then maybe, you know, you need to find your passion in traveling. I'm <laughs> just saying. Awesome. <laughs> All, me, Megan. Always blast. sage advice. Thanks so much, Marisol. Have an amazing day. You too. Thanks. 
If you enjoyed our conversation and would like to hear more, head on over to Stitcher or iTunes and subscribe to the Anthropology Podcast. We would also really appreciate a quick review. When people have their health, they can change the world. Let us keep you healthy and you go change the world.